And we're going to hear from that teenage car thief and also her mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were just walking, tired of walking, and then we just took it. So you and a group of friends were just tired of walking and said, let's just take a car. Mm-hmm. Call it a crime of opportunity or ruthless robbery. It's a problem, not only plaguing Peoria and shocking the state. Stolen car intentionally rammed a squad car. The dark color that he drew now now. But a nuisance throughout the nation. Teens stealing cars, some empty-handed, others guns drawn. First tonight, there has been an uptake in car thefts nationwide this past year, and we're on a mission to find out why that's the case. In our search for solutions over the years, we've spoken with police, city leaders, and community activists. But for the first time, looking for understanding, we're hearing directly from a teen involved in the acts. In that moment, you don't care. Like, I don't care until I am actually in a cell. A 15-year-old, we'll call her Kayla. From her experience telling the whys, the hows, and if there's a way to stop it. What made you want to do that? Want to take cars? To be in them and for memories. And... Kayla's been involved and arrested in at least four car thefts since 2022, not including stealing her own mother's car for a joyride. She says she hasn't done it since her latest arrest and says she's only ever been a passenger in the stolen cars, never in the driver's seat. How did you feel when you did it for the first time? Anxious, scared. But I was also good because I was in a car. In the car with friends, which is the only reason she says she'll go along with it, including in a previous carjacking when an older woman was assaulted and injured. She says she and others learn tactics from videos on YouTube and TikTok, some giving step-by-step -step instructions on stealing, starting, and speeding off. Do you ever think about the people who are hurt in these incidents? Mm -mm. It's technically not my responsibility. You got a key and not me. As of October of this year, that number is already surpassed with 905 thefts and 53 of them landing juveniles behind bars. It's infuriating. It's embarrassing, actually. This is Kayla's mom, Nikki, reacting to Kayla's actions. While she says Kayla's younger years in DCFS played a big role in her behavior, she also believes peer pressure and lenient consequences can motivate these crimes. If they don't have enough points, to go to the juvie, oh, they'll leave them out here. So you getting away with it. Scott free, they gonna take you home to your parent. But even when teens are booked, she says a short stay at the juvenile detention center doesn't always work. I've once said, they've been in there 15 days. They have not learned a lesson. I'm not coming to get them. Well, we're gonna call DCFS on you and you're gonna get the charge for neglect if you don't come get them. You know, a lot of people would say the parents should do more. What exactly are you doing or have you done to, to stop this behavior? What are we to do? We can't touch them. We barely can say something to them, you know, or DCFS is threatened into our lives. They're not running me and my household. And if you kick them out, going to jail again, that's neglect. So we, can you give me some options? So do you feel stuck? Yes. Definitely. This is the reality we showed Peoria County State's Attorney Jody Hoos. I'm sympathetic to the mom. Whose office is often criticized with many saying not enough is done to prosecute and punish teen offenders. We seek punishment that we can under the law. You know, unfortunately, the juvenile court system was created in a different time. She says the goal of juvenile court is rehabilitation, not punishment. Although more violent offenses like carjackings, assault, and murder are exceptions, unlike destruction to property, ergo car thefts. You know, it's not a perfect system, and I, I agree, but at the end of the day, we have to follow the law. So what exactly can be done right now? A question I asked Kayla. Nothing could stop any kid from doing anything they want to do. I mean, nobody's going to stop taking cars. And even if you try to put a lock on a car, try to do anything, they're still going to find a way. If teens and juveniles had stricter punishment, do you think that would stop them? Yeah. Her mom, who's afraid that reaching out for community help may possibly lead to DCFS getting involved. They need somebody who can talk to and will not go and tell others what's going on. We have to try to strike into, into our, their psyche and also the magnitude of what they're doing. Antoine Banks is the founder and CEO of Product of the Project, an organization investing in inner city kids, offering mentorships, nutrition, curriculums, and soft skills. A lot of these kids in their subconscious is moved by video games, music, 
and they don't have, they don't equate that with real life. He says exposing teens to the reality of life with positive and successful reflections of themselves and others to the negative outcomes of their decisions could help steer them on the right path. 